thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. Um, today, I want to talk about, because this is what my company is all about, uh, besides being a realtor for uh, the last 20 years. Um, well, let me just explain this first, how I got to real estate. Uh, I began real estate when I was 50 years old. I'm 70 now. <clears throat> I've got four kids, 11 grandkids. Um, and before moving to Arizona, um, we lived in New York, in New York, and I was a women's clothing manufacturer for 27 years in the heart of Manhattan. Um, back then, no internet. Uh, we had to build relationships with department store buyers and chain store buyers and constantly keep that relationship going for more and more business. Um, and buyers changed all the time, just like ours do. Um, basically, uh, we had to keep in touch. We did it by phone to get appointments, a lot of face-to-face -face asking buyers out for lunches and events. As a side note, I married one of my buyers. <clears throat> And in, in, 90, in the late 90s, I uh, witnessed uh, pretty much like the demise of the real estate, of not the real estate, the garment center industry, since everything was going offshore to China, Vietnam, India, and what have you. So um, in 99, we decided to make a move. We went out to Arizona. Uh, saw the end of the garment center coming to an end, uh, kind of like 2008 for our realtors, but much worse. Uh, the garment center life today is pretty much non-existent. Uh, and garment center life was very similar to real estate. As a matter of fact, I can look back now and label everyone with a disc profile, uh, whether it's personalities or the different job positions that they've had. Um, when we moved to Arizona, uh, my wife, who was, was a trained chef in New York City, um, opened up a restaurant in around year 2000. By then already, the internet became popular. And through the restaurant, I built my first database for our customers. And I emailed customers and met everyone face to face at the restaurant. Uh, my wife was the back end. I was up front. I'm considered the schmoozer. And even though she's the high I and I'm a high C disc profile, I'm still a much, much better schmoozer. Um, and a lot of realtors went to our restaurant. I mean, every day. And I knew real estate, that's where I wanted to be. And I already had a database to work with. So um, a lot of the realtors that came to the restaurant were Keller Williams agents. Uh, I joined Keller Williams and was rookie of the year in my first year. Um, and my market center was, I believe, the first market center in Arizona. And, and by the way, I have to say at 50 years old, uh, joining Keller Williams, I would say Keller Williams has changed my life for the better uh, ever since. Um, and and Ricky, that's, that's high praise. That's high praise since you're not with the family currently. <laughs> uh, well, Keller Williams is always my family, regardless. Yes, and I agree. I agree. I think yeah. the point here is that it set you on such a solid, solid base, solid course for success. So I appreciate you sharing yeah. that. Uh, and, and not just uh, business-wise, but personally as well. Um, and I, I, so this is where I, I started real estate, and I'm going to get into how we started Follow-Up Results, which is a marketing company. Um, at that time, 5% of realtors was really marketing to their database. 95% obviously didn't. And you can certainly guess who got the 95% of the business back then. Um, in 2008, 2009, I was one of the first Keller Williams productivity coaches at our market center. Uh, there wasn't even a manual yet for it. And, and I was coaching a team, small team, husband, wife, uh, sister, 
Um, and the, the sister was the admin. Her name was Janet. And she was brilliant, like in, 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 a brilliant geek at the time. Um, and she created an email marketing program for her team, basically a 33 touch. And I was so impressed with it. Um, and I kind of asked her to let's do start a company and let's do this for all our agents, because I think she was the only one in our market center actually doing it. Um, and we did. And so we opened up our company. At the time, the name of our company was called 12 to 2 Results. So that's a test question for you guys if you know what that actually means. Uh, ben, do you know? I think I'll probably fail, but I, I think I could come up with something. But uh, since all cameras are on me right now, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll make it easy on you. Uh, that was in Gary Keller's original book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Oh, yes. Agent no, I know. Right? For yes. every 12 people in your yes. database, you across. should get two transactions. Right. Uh, the numbers have changed since, uh, but that's how we started off. But just like most of us, uh, no one understood the name of our company. So we did change it. And we changed it to uh, follow up results. Um, all our clients, they were just realtors. Uh, we did real estate teams. And believe it or not, eventually we did one of the early ex Keller Williams expansion teams. Uh, for one year, we did the marketing for all of Five Doors Network with Seth, Seth Campbell. And that was a, a lot of fun. Uh, but that was it. Nowadays, it's different. And what I want to discuss actually today is if you're doing any kind of email marketing, um, we all have to up our game and not just send things out, but make sure you get actually business out of it. So, and the reason why I say that today, uh, we have a different kind of competition. We have companies selling leads to agents. Uh, we're competing with iBuyer companies. We're con competing with artificial intelligence. Um, and, and living proof of that is just do a search on something on your computer, and then you go to your Facebook page, and all of a sudden you'll see different ads for what you're searching for. Um, so we're competing with that. Um, so not only do we have to create marketing to be in front of our sphere of influence and our past clients, but your marketing actually has to provide leads for you to actually follow up, follow up by calling them, texting them, just be there always for your database. Um, because if we don't, our competition's going to know way before us what our clients are thinking, what they're looking for. Um, we have to commit to protect our relationship with our own database. Otherwise, it'll be too late. And I'll give you an example. Just this past week, a client of mine, Al Nelson. So now I'm, I'm not anymore in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm in Prescott, Arizona. And I have a client, Al Nelson. He's planning on moving here from Al Nelson, uh, from Idaho. Uh, somehow wanting to move to Prescott to be closer to his son in San Diego, go figure. Um, and he's one of those buyer clients that has been looking forever. Uh, and he calls me up and he says, you know, I'm getting, uh, statistic reports, Prescott statistic reports that are different than yours. Uh, and then I had to go in and explain to him that, well, I already know what you're searching for, so I'm going with a specific area, not the whole uh, Quad City area, which encompasses other towns. Uh, he says, oh, okay. Well, how did they find out about me? And I said, well, have you been searching online? Yes. Have you been checking out mortgage rates online? Yes. Well, that's how they get you because other realtors are paying for those leads from those companies. So it's that important that we stay in front. Don't even think that your past clients are always going to be the ones to do business with you because unless you keep up with these people and close that relationship that you have with them, um, 
yeah, you're always going to have you're always going to have people in your database that will uh, pass clients that will do business with you again, but you don't know what you're missing if you don't stay in front of them. And I'll give you, I used to tell people I'm coaching, let's do the Richie the Realtor test. Uh, go back five years of your database, who you sold houses to. Now go check the tax records, see if they're still in that house. Uh, nobody wants to do that. But you have to. You have to actually see what's going on. And if you look at uh, NAR's statistics, just go to 2022. And by the way, they're the same almost every single year. Um, if they ask if the buyers would do business with a real estate agent again, and 76% said most definitely. But when you look at another graph that they show, um, to see if they are, the percentages are much, much, much lower and much, much lower that they even even refer you to someone that uh, they know. Um, so that only means one thing. We are not doing a great job. And I'm sure we've all heard this before. So now let's talk about follow-up results, what we've been doing for our agents. And I, I'm going to preface this by saying, um, this is not a sales pitch. Realtors can do this for themselves. Uh, you could probably do this through through command. You can probably do this from other CRMs. Uh, CRMs. The only thing is, are you actually going to take the time to do it? Uh, one of the acronyms, Keller Williams is always big on acronyms, uh, is ACE um, and ACE. And that always stuck in my mind. So that acronym stands for your marketing has to be automatic, consistent, and effective. So um, I find that most agents, uh, they, they'll create their marketing, but they're certainly not going to be consistent about doing it. Uh, the other thing that, the thing that's important though, but whatever marketing you're doing in email marketing specifically, um, how are you getting leads from it? So for our marketing, which, and I'll explain to you what we do is each month we create a custom newsletter for our clients. Each month we plug into their MLS and able to give their, their database uh, uh, local market reports. Uh, we send out holidays, eight holidays, and we get do six extras so that if we, if an agent wants us to create a new listing announcement for their database or an open house announcement for their database, uh, or even if they want to do an event. I have a couple of clients in the East Coast that actually do like buyer, buyer events and what have you. So, but the thing is, um, again, how are you going to get leads? And if you look at our newsletters at all, every single item in our newsletter is a link, a link that you can go back into the reports, check and see exactly who in your database, click through on them, and then follow up with them. So, um, and there are three ways, let's say on your newsletter specifically, there are three ways that we get leads. Uh, so number one, the header, that's the first thing people open up when they get their email. And we provide these buttons and these buttons are links uh, driving traffic to your website. So I'm sure you've seen all that. So right away, there's a home value a button to click on so people can find out their home value. There's a search button. Uh, but we provide three or four buttons, and the other buttons could be anywhere you want to drive traffic to and be able to track who's going there. So one of my favorites that some of our clients use is get a prequel here. And that'll be a direct link to the lender that they use to their page. That's a, a great lead to follow up with. And it also allows now the lender to contribute to the cost of the marketing. So that's one of my favorites. The second way we give listing, uh, the, we get leads is we ask all of our clients to give us each month six 
active listings and they don't have to be their own. They can be from their market centers. Uh, all the listings belong to the broker. So we asked for six active listings, but specifically we asked them to give us listings in different price points because two things, we want to attract buyers in different price points, but we also want to show potential sellers that, yeah, we do business in their price point. So uh, that's a great lead source. But actually my favorite one is the content that we provide. We specifically look each month for articles that if someone is actually going to take the time to read them, to click through to read them, um, that's really a great lead. So we provide articles, let's say, that pertain just to people thinking about selling. We provide articles for people in the market for buying. Uh, we provide articles just specifically directed towards millennials. So if you could imagine if someone's uh, clicking on an article, um, how are we going to sell? How are you going to sell a house in this particular market? Um, that's a, a fantastic lead to follow up with. So those are the three ways. Uh, the other thing that's important is when we ask our clients to give us uh, those listings, we also ask them, although it's not mandatory, to give us a video, one to two minute video. Any realtor, any team that provides us a, a video for their newsletter, that is absolutely the most click through item on any newsletter and Think about it, that is your relationship builder, right? I see it, and, and I have to say, I am totally guilty of not doing it myself. And finally, I had a slow two weeks. I was working on my business instead of in my business. And I said, I better do what I preach. And I did, I've been doing videos since. And guess what? number one click-through item on my marketing. So that is extremely important. But here, here's another thing. We don't want just our clients to get leads from their marketing. We want them to be able, and I want you to be able to build a referral business from our marketing. So generally what happens when we get a new client their first newsletter goes out and I send each one personally, I send an email to those people saying, this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to look at your report. I would like you to call. And it is very important for everyone to try to build up in their database to get phone calls, to get phone numbers. Uh, but if not, you'll email. But I, I ask my clients to reach out to every single person that clicked through on any specific link in that email, in that newsletter. Reach out to them. I give them a list of about four or five questions, you know, basically saying, I'm really excited. It's my first newsletter that went out. Um, I want to know what you think about it. Did you happen to read through any articles? And you actually know all of this, what they did. Um, but you ask them these questions. The most important question is the last question. Would you mind, would it be possible, would you allow me every three, four months to check in with you, give you a call, and just ask you if you happen to know anyone that could use my help? And if they give you permission to do that, you go back to your calendar, you time block every three, four months that you're going to call that person. And that's how we all are going to build a much, much better, robust referral business. Um, the other thing, there are two other things that I want to discuss with you that are very important. When I moved, I still have time, right? You're good. Okay. When I moved from Phoenix to Prescott, which is about six years ago, 
um, I didn't have a sphere of influence anymore. Uh, I mean, I did, but I would have to travel two hours to go to them. So, but I didn't know anyone up in Prescott, Arizona. By the way, Prescott, Arizona is absolutely beautiful. It's, I'm at close to 6,000 feet elevation. It's 20 degrees cooler. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I didn't have a database. Out of necessity, I figured out, well, I don't know people, but I know a lot of realtors. I was still with Keller Williams. And I figured out where people are moving from. And they're all moving from either down in the Phoenix to get out of the heat, or they're coming from California, or they're coming from Washington. And I would bet that's the same for you. So what I did, I created an email marketing plan just going to realtors only. So I, I, I haven't met a realtor yet that has any kind of actual touch program just going to realtors. Well, this is what happened to me. Moving ahead, let's say five years later. Right now, agent referrals is just about 80% of my whole real estate business. It is awesome. I get at least three to four agent referrals a month. And even if it, the referral doesn't work out for me because um, a realtor in California um, doesn't know, is not familiar with Arizona, they'll say, well, um, I have a client moving to Payson. No problem. Keller Williams mindset, make it a win-win. I know an agent for you to talk with. So it always works out. Uh, and the funny thing, I'm sure you get a lot of emails from other realtors. I'm sure you don't open them up. I'm sure they don't open up ours. Mine does, it doesn't matter whether they open it up or not. Um, for those of you that have been in bold, uh, you might remember your reticular activator that we all have. Um, my email subject line is always the same. Your Prescott, Arizona agent refer referral agent partner. So whether they open it up, up or not, um, they see that in their inbox. So when a realtor in California gets a call from someone in their database saying, hey, I want you to list our house, we're moving to Prescott, Arizona. Prescott, I know just the realtor for you. And that's been working so well for me. We now do that separately for other follow-up results agents or even for agents that just want to do that. And it's very inexpensive. Uh, you just got to give it time to percolate. Uh, the last thing that I just want to share with you is AI. I asked AI a question about what's better for a real estate agent, uh, email marketing, or um, social, social media. And it really gave a fantastic answer. It's kind of long, so I'm going to keep it really short. Um, and, and for those of you that are it's like early 30s and, and in their 20s, uh, social marketing is fantastic. Social media marketing is fantastic. Um, but it serves a different purpose. So even if you're a young person and that's how you um, communicate with your sphere uh, and to get new business, you got, still have to remember that those Young people might be referring you their parents, other relatives, uh, other people that they're doing business with. So you have to be able to touch both. Um, so basically, AI came back and said both email marketing and social media marketing can be effective for real estate agents, but they have different strengths and weaknesses. Email marketing is a great way to build relationships with potential and current clients. It allows you to send personalized message directly to their inbox, which can help you stay top of mind and build trust. Email marketing can also be used to promote new listings, generate leads, and close deals. Social media marketing is a great way to reach a large audience and generate exposure for your business. It can also be used to build relationships with potential and current clients 
and to generate leads. However, social media marketing can be more time consuming and challenging than email marketing, and it can be difficult to measure uh, the results of your efforts. So I, I, I thought that was a very important thing to point out to everybody. Both are very important to our business. Um, any questions? Uh, Richie, that's one, that's just great information. And I, I will chime in and it's funny because I, I met you because of one of your agents, if you remember Mike Mendoza, right? Yes. Right, Mike was the number one agent with my realty executives firm, I don't know, 25 years ago. And he came to Keller Williams before I did. And I started following him because <laughs> consistently, and again, this goes back to your ACE uh, you know, acronym, right? Automatic, consistent, and effective. Each and every month, I would get something from Mike. And because of that, I reached out to you years ago and said that I wanted to be the Mike Mendoza of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And that's the reason why we met and right. have done business ever since. And so it's it's my fourth pillar of my business. It's agent to agent referrals. And I can tell you, and again, guys, understand this is clearly not a sales pitch. Uh, Rich, Richie has built a very nice and effective business by, I think, by doing the simple things, right? Following up, staying in touch, right? Bringing value. And, and that's what follow-up results has done for me. And again, I think that, uh, your experience in the clo clothing business uh, has propelled you into what we currently do, right? It's connection. Right. It's staying in touch, right? It's bringing um, service to an even, even higher level. And, and finally, uh, because there's many of us on the call that are very mature, right? Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I think, Richie, you show that it's it's not too late because even my son is on this call at 23, right? And uh, it's not too early or not too late. Um, because as I look at some of my friends uh, who have only been doing this a short while, and they're closer to my age, or even more mature, uh, that when you bring, I think, uh, a willingness and a passion to what you do, uh, then you can su succeed at a very high level, like you've done, Mike. <laughs>